told me I'm a burnout, told me I'm an outcast Now that it's my turn, y'all gon' learn and get outclassed All I do is work, I'ma smirk when your clout pass Be about as long as that perk in your mouth lasts Homie, y'all should face facts, y'all a stick a straw in a haystack Just another cog that revolve for a playback Y'all do not evolve, I'm a god to you cavemen Hi, this is Marcus Pulis of Aquarian Anarchy And I've got a new project that I'm starting um, It's actually... An old project I'm reinvigorating. Uh, several years ago, I started a, uh, a project called Voluntary Visions, and I was mainly covering freedom ideas and introducing forgotten freedom fighters um, based on the articles that I wrote for Adam Kokesh when I was his press secretary. And uh, they're old and sometimes dated, but there's a lot of really good information in there, particularly about the uh, the forgotten freedom fighters. So this will be the introduction to all of those videos, and uh, it will go from here into the other uh, videos that... Um, that I have. It will start with Thomas Young, and I know you don't know who that is, and it will go through several different people. Um, enjoy. It will. They, they are amazing people that have influenced freedom and brought about new ideas of liberty. Enjoy them. Stay free. Welcome to Aquarian Anarchy. This is Marcus Pulis, Best Laid Plans. I had intended on this very first video to be one of the older videos uh, that I recorded this, but it's been several years ago, and apparently it has degraded. I went to, uh, to update within the system and, uh, and put the introductory video that you just watched on, and it just wouldn't do it. So I decided I will just record this one again. Uh, hopefully the further ones will be the older ones, so I don't have to work so hard. <laughs> but um, but this, uh, again, um, works, and hopefully you will enjoy this video because um, Thomas Young is a really interesting uh, individual and uh, needs to be recognized for the good that he did. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. This is uh, my article that I wrote uh, around uh, four years ago now, uh, entitled The Forgotten Freedom Fighters, Dr. Thomas Young, the First American Revolutionary. Our history books are full of references to the Boston Tea Party. The images of our forefathers dressed as Mohawk Indians boarding three East India Company ships in Boston Harbor and making this iconic stand against British tyranny brings a swelling heart to all members of the freedom movement who understands the ideas of civil liberties and civil disobedience. This event is one of a few events that moved the colonies towards independence from rule by the British Empire. On December 16, 1773, the members of the Sons of Liberty, dressed as Mohawks because they wanted to define themselves as Americans, not as British citizens, they defied the authorities by throwing boxes of tea overboard. Taxation without representation would be their slogan to justify those actions. This act of civil disobedience would bring down retaliation from the Crown. And they knew it. It led to the tyrannical British government removing self-rule from Massachusetts colony and closing the harbor, crippling the Boston economy. This chain of events directly led to the people of Massachusetts rising up against what were called the Coercive Acts, or the Intolerable Acts. The uprising would lead to the First Continental Congress, petitioning King George for the repeal of the Acts, he refused, leading to the American Revolutionary War near Boston in 1775. Most of us know this story. As I said, it is iconic. We all know what happened. Do you know who the people were that were involved? Many historians would say that the leader of the Sons of Liberty in Boston was Samuel Adams. It is true that Samuel Adams certainly was their leader. Was he there? It's unknown. What is known is that he defended the action and became recognized in the growing freedom movement of the time. I love Samuel Adams. He is an important, well-remembered freedom fighter. But the credit for the Boston Tea Party should not go to him. The spark that ignited the American Revolution in the Old South Church in Boston on December 16th were not kindled by Samuel Adams. 
Earlier that year, on November 29th, this action was proposed in Boston by a loudmouth doctor, best friend of General Ethan Allen, and, the member, and a member of his Green Mountain Boys. His name was Thomas Young. The idea of throwing the tea into the harbor was his, and he drummed up support for it publicly. I enjoy here history, and I adore these freedom fighters that share their passion with the world. No one I have found in my research make their way into my heart as much as this Dr. Thomas Young. I think I have fallen in love, and you should too, because this country would not exist if it were not for him. He is everything I like in a hero. He is loud, opinionated, and a radical on every front. He challenged governments and churches. His voice was everywhere in the 1770s, all over the world. So why has no one ever heard of him? Then, just like today, people feared change. Thomas Young was full of evolution. Our government and their puppets in history, in writing history, like to paint the picture of the revolution as a centrally planned event led by leaders like General George Washington, or in this case, Samuel Adams. This simply is not factual. The revolution was not a single event. This particular case, for instance, was a series of happenings that led to the to the what eventually would be a separation from British rule. The Boston Tea Party was just one of many places where individuals acted. Thomas Young was not a leader of men. He led only one man, himself, and others walked his way. This is the mark of true leadership. His voice neither began nor ended in Boston, but I want to share his part of the story that is the American Freedom Movement. To continue with this part of the story, it was Dr. Thomas Young who inspired those men to disobedience, but his role in the event does not end there. In, the, in colonial America, just like today, you could not just board ships. There was a security guard, there were security guarding, there was security guarding the boats and the harbor as well. In this particular case, many of those guards were armed British soldiers. Had this band of 30 or more men just tried to board the ships, they would have either been arrested or worse, shot. Onto the stage steps our loudmouth hero, Thomas Young, who already had a reputation for mischief, he uh, stepped out onto the stage. He drew the attention of the guards of the Old South Church with a satirical speech on, quote, the ill effects of tea on the Constitution. While the soldiers were trying to shut him up and silence his obvious attacks on the acts of, of the British government, and the other sons, the other sons were dumping the tea. He was the only one punished. He was beaten by the officials for the offense to the crown. They almost killed him. Keep this in mind. Thomas Young was talk, taking direct action for freedom, while others, much more well known, were not. At this time, John Adams was not involved. He, in his own words, was an enthusiastic bystander. George Washington, at this time, quote, had serious doubts about America's place in the empire, end quote. Benjamin Franklin was in London. As for Thomas Jefferson, John Adams says of him that at this time, he, quote, knew more about the eclipses of Jupiter's satellites than that what was passing in Boston, end quote. James Madison was 22 at the time, and Alexander Hamilton, who was not a freedom fighter, but a snake, was 16. This is just the beginning of how Thomas Young is at least as responsible for the revolution as any of these men, if not more. He was there at the beginning of the revolution as a freedom activist. Matthew Stewart, who I owe a huge debt for this much of this information, calls Young a plotter, a, conspir a conspirer, an ideologue, and a provocateur. Young vowed, I will fight the good fight. His story did not begin with the Boston Tea Party, nor did it end there. In 1764, his first published works appeared. It championed the natural rights of man versus imperial rule. In 1765, he led a protest against the Stamp Act. Seeing the actions of the government, it was this fighting oppression that brought him to Boston to the aid of Samuel Adams. The governor of Massachusetts, Thomas Hutchinson, named him one of the most dangerous men in town. In 1772, Young helped 
found the Boston Committee of Correspondence, which was responsible for spreading revolutionary and democratic thought throughout the colony. It was one of the earliest American examples of propaganda. It, its reach would stretch all the way to England and to Scotland. He would help pin the publication entitled, quote, The Rights of the Colonists, which would go on to be one of the models used for the Declaration of Independence. As I indicated above, Dr. Thomas Young was not finished in stirring the waves of liberty. In 1775, he would move to Philadelphia and find another ally, Thomas Paine. Most of us know Thomas Paine as the writer of Common Sense, which was the document that would inspire everyone fighting in the Revolutionary War. George Washington would later, later say that there would have been no revolution without Thomas Paine. These two together in one place would not just fan the flames of freedom, it was like someone turned on a flamethrower. This is truly when Young's actions would add to the, the most to the cause of human independence. The contributions of Pennsylvania Colony to the Continental Congress came only second to Virginia. Pennsylvania's opinions had great wealth, well, great weight. As an example, the most notable member of the Second Continental Congress was Benjamin Franklin. When Young arrived, Pennsylvania was decidedly conservative and pro-British. In May of 1776, this was still true. Young and Payne and their radical friends successfully persuaded the Pennsylvania legislator in a vote of six to four to support a resolution that said all governments ruled by the crown should be, quote, totally suppressed. This is, is in essence, nullified the Pennsylvania government. A new government was established. One of its first acts was to have its delegates to the Continental Congress vote for independence from Brit the British Empire. This was so important that John Adams, who had become the face of the cause of independence, wrote, quote, You will see Pennsylvania, one of the most patriotic colonies, voted that the delegates for this colony ought, on the 1st of July, to vote for independence. The revolution is now began and must be supported. Thomas Young, end quote, Thomas Young would go on to help write the new Constitution of Pennsylvania. In support of our war effort, Benjamin Franklin would go to France to try and receive support from the French people. It is said that while he was there, he passed out papers that explained the nature of liberty and the need for all freedom-loving people like those in France should lend their support to the effort in America. Many people assume, being that Franklin was a wise and respected man, that those papers were composed by Franklin himself. They were not. Thomas Young was the author of most of those papers. It can be argued that France's support of our cause was an important aspect of our success. Again, Dr. Thomas Young should be credited. So why is it? that his name is nowhere found in the history books of today. It is obvious to me and anyone else who studies him that his part of the American Revolution was huge. The answer to this, this question is likely a complicated one. Some, such as Martin Matthew Stewart and Nature's God, would argue that it was because Dr. Young was not just evolutionary and revolutionary in his political ideas, he was also a deist and certainly influenced both, both Thomas Paine and General Allen, who went to write books on deism. These three men are despised by the churchmen of the time. I myself, being a deist, have made the argument that many of Thomas Paine's writings on liberty, such as the rights of man, are excluded from discussions on the early years of the American government's history due to his deism. Benjamin Franklin, another deist, warned Paine not to publish his famous deist work, Age of Reason. He told Paine, and he was right, that his enemies would conspire against him if he publicly admitted his religious beliefs. All of this is likely part of the reason Thomas Young has been forgotten. I do not believe that it is the entirety of the story. Perhaps the primary reason has been has been removed, and his that he has been removed, and his two closest friends, Payne and Allen, have been minimized. And the reason is a different belief altogether. It is the same reason that Mercy Otis Warren is marginalized, who my wife will talk about next week. These heroes believed in self-ownership and largely opposed a strong central or federal government.
They did not want to exchange one behemoth empire for a new newborn empire. They foresaw correctly the dangers of giving too much power to a central government. These people are just as big a threat then as people like Adam Kokesh, Ron Paul, Martin Luther King, or Emma Goldman are in the last century. We not only believe in true freedom and self-ownership, we act on those beliefs. All of these people, from Thomas Young to Adam Kokesh, were willing to put their freedom on the line to set people free. It is easy to see the comparison to Thomas Young performing the distraction so, so that the Boston Tea Party could happen, to Kokesh dancing at the Jefferson Memorial to abolish a contrived and silly rule against freedom. Seeing Kokesh load a shotgun on the National Mall in D.C. in defiance to the laws in opposition to our right to self-defense is no different than Thomas Young using a controversial defense against smallpox that likely saved the screaming Ethan Allen's life. I'll get to that when I talk about Ethan Allen, which is a good one. This is why he has been hidden from us. Those in power do not want us to have examples of men and women who buck the system and fight against it. They are okay with those who complain, but they fear those who act. Just like millions of people are following the examples set by these modern freedom fighters like those I listed above, Dr. Thomas Young was a true freedom fighter. He not only had ideas, he fought for them. I hope all of you are reading this or listening to this at this point and join me in taking action for freedom and holding our own freedom as something sacred. Take action and spread your ideas in this world. How I've chosen to do this is with it, things like this project. This act puts me in good company. I thank Thomas Young for inspiring me further in my activism. Thomas Young paid the ultimate price for being a hero. He was born February 19th, 1731 and he died in Philadelphia on June 24th, 1777, at the age of 46. He was a doctor, and while treating the soldiers fighting for the cause he so valiantly helped start, he caught fever, and he died. I really enjoy Thomas Young, and I think that his um, additions to freedom and the ideas of freedom are enormous. There are many other people that can be credited with similar actions. I look forward to giving you more uh, examples of those uh, wonderful people, whether it be Thomas Paine, which is one of the later ones, or Ethan Allen, or somebody like Red Cloud of the Sioux Nation. My wife will uh, do the next one of these. Uh, hopefully the recording works um, and I won't have to re-record it uh, on Mercy Otis Warren. And uh, she's a really good uh, one as well. So I advise you watch that one too. Either way, my friends, thank you for watching Aquarian Anarchy. Thank you for watching the Forgotten Freedom Fighters series. And as always, stay free.